Hello everyone and welcome to this general Adobe scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how you can support other languages inside of your script. Primarily, this is going to apply for when you need to access uh, certain properties in a different language, or in the case of today's tutorial, running command IDs. Uh, how do you run a command if you don't know all these other languages? So today I'm going to be going over the resources you can find on your own computer and how to basically use them to make your script work for any language. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link. Make sure you follow us there for coding updates and in the description as well, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you haven't already joined our Discord server, make sure you come and join, get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, share products, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us and become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, you can get cool perks and help us out financially, as well as get cool Discord status and attend things like premium VIP streams or supporters monthly Q&A streams. All right, so how do we get all the information from another language that we don't speak? Well, you could obviously guess, but that's not necessarily the best idea. And as you may know, many commands that you can run inside of a script are basically language dependent. So in this example, we're running an After Effects script, which will look for the command ID. What we want to do is run copy. Now, normally what I would do, I would say app.execute command. And you could, there's all sorts of numbers for the different commands built into After Effects. One way we can actually kind of ask what the command for a certain piece of text is, we can say app.findMenuCommandID. And if we type in a string like copy, this will give us a number for this particular command. And we can plug in that number down here into execute command to actually run that command. This is the same thing as just going to edit copy and essentially will allow you to run a command that is in any of the menus in After Effects. And then from there, what we can do is nest this find command ID where the number usually goes. Because when we call this bit of code, it gives us the number. So then we can give the execute command that number to execute that particular command. Now, of course, this is primarily for After Effects in the case of executing a menu command, but this can also apply for other things in other programs like uh, running certain operations. If you wanted to say, understand what scale is in various languages, or you wanted to access the position in various languages and then change that. So then how do we get all of the language information that I have here already? Well, I have the link pasted here. All you have to do is go to your After Effects version uh, folder into your support files and dictionaries. So if I go into my support files, find dictionaries, you can see I have um, German, Spanish, French, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Brazilian, Portuguese, Russian, and Chinese. So if I go into one of these, you can see most of them just have a dat file. And a couple of them have a couple others, it looks like. But inside of this dat file, you can open it with uh, most text editors. It contains a long list of information. And all of this are the built-in sort of text to all the menus in After Effects. You can see, even if you don't speak Spanish, a couple of these make obvious sense, like Essential Graphics, Cinema 4D, Script in the scripting section. So this is where we can find in any single language uh, what the command or menu text is going to say. And you might say, well, I don't speak any Chinese, and how am I supposed to understand the Chinese text? Well, basically, these files are all one-to-one. -one. If you find what copy is in one document, that same line in the other document, maybe this is just an example, but say it was line 40 in this document, in the next document, that same command is the same line of code. These are all one-for-one -one dat files. So all you have to do is find it in one of the languages and then go to that same line. Like if I wanted to see what script is inside of uh, the Chinese file, I'd go to line 136. It does give the name away a little bit right here, but we do need the Chinese text or whatever foreign language we want to support. And as you can see, this file is quite large. It's around, well, more than 20,000. It's nearing up on 29,000 lines. And uh, 
that may be a little overwhelming. So one thing you'll definitely want to do is control F and use some kind of search feature. If you're looking for scripting, you can see it's going to take us there. And we can also see there's some other scripting is busy, JavaScript, description, superscript, and uh, make sure you know how to search through a document because that's going to be really important in a massive document like this, trying to find uh, specific menu commands or other things. So now for the actual implementation, once you've gone through, in this case, I've gotten the copy operation in English, German, Spanish, French, and all these other languages. And we have them inside of, a, of an object here. In our case, we're going to make an object for each command we want. Or if you say have a property like your script needs to modify the scale, you could have a scale object and have the word for scale or the property name for scale uh, in each of the languages. So all you have to do is create an object for your property that you want to represent. Let's go ahead and just say in this case like scale, if we want to do that. And I'll call this a scale object. Then each property of this object is one of the languages we support. We'll have English, French, Italian, uh, I'll throw in Spanish, and uh, we can then fill it in with whatever the information is. Now we have to go into the dictionary to see what that information is. I know scale in English is scale, and then you can go in and fill in the rest. And then we can go in here and type in scale. You can see we have scale X, Y, and Z. This might not be under what you need. Also note that a lot of these properties are listed multiple times and are applying to different things. So make sure you really do searching when you go through here. Uh, make sure you really find the one that applies to what you need. As you can see, like these ones are scales, but they reference the free pin effect, which is definitely not what we want. That's the basic way you construct the uh, object array, which is gonna contain your different languages. And then in this example, let's say we had a language specific scale that we needed to get in After Effects again, or a different program. We could reference like our layer and say property scale object, and then we would give it maybe English, or we could give it Spanish or French. And uh, then we could say, oh, I wanna set the value to be the default, 100 by 100. Now, what this is gonna do again, we're going to be referencing our scale object, which has all these languages, obviously they're all in English right now, but uh, it will then, you can then provide it with the property language that you want. And you can link this easily to like a dropdown. You would just say like language dropdown dot selection dot index. And if you had a language dropdown that was one to one to how these are built, then you can easily do that as well. But in this case, I'll just say fr, and then we can set the value of that property. Uh, and basically the whole point is to be able to support other languages. A lot of people use English After Effects even in other countries, but it is important to have support for all these different languages. And of course, this doesn't just apply for After Effects. That's why this tutorial is under the heading of sort of general Adobe tutorial. This is, can be applicable to anything as long as the program has these dictionaries or uh, properties or commands that are in different languages. So you can go in, of course, and check them out and make your script compatible with any language. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below. Hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the link below. Make sure you follow us there on GitHub for coding updates. And in the description as well, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, make sure you come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us financially and get cool perks at the same time, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, link in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone, we'll see you next time.